Welcome to Today in Rocket Science, I'm Adam Balkin and I'm here at the New York Hall of Science which is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year after opening at the 1964 World's Fair. Now, more times than not, the subject matter of the program really isn't rocket science. However, this past month, we've witnessed the highs and lows of space travel and how the pioneers in the field remain focused despite setbacks that will hopefully lead to future success. But first, we'll take a look at how one aerospace company is pushing the boundaries of physics and how you could one day be in the cockpit delve into the science of natural disasters, what causes them and how we can prepare for future events. And it's all things STEM as we travel across the country to talk to students who are celebrating science, technology, engineering, and math at their local science museums. All part of Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds campaign to get you educated and interested about STEM opportunities in your community. All right, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go back to the top and what many consider the final frontier, space exploration and travel. In recent weeks, the failed launch of NASA's Antares rocket and the Virgin Galactic test flight catastrophe, which claimed the life of one of its pilots, have put a damper on the outlook for commercial spaceflight. And the disappointment stretched beyond the spaceflight industry. A number of student experiments were aboard the unmanned Antares rocket headed for the International Space Station when the rocket broke apart just seconds after liftoff. A group of middle school students from San Antonio watched as their projects went up in smoke. NASA announced that it, it was a fail. It was like really depressed because all that hard work. It blows up and now they gotta start all over again. And they weren't alone in their disappointment. We visited the World Journalism Preparatory School in Queens, New York to talk with some young scientists who suffered the same setback. Pretty sad. I was like, I was pretty. I was first. I was pretty happy because my. I was like, oh, that's 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 part of my my work going up in space. But then all of a sudden, just pulls up. But it's not the end of the road. Students from both schools say they plan on pressing on and sending their projects back up when the rocket relaunches. Luckily, we still have all our information. We still have all our ingredients. We just need to put it together and send it back up. After it blew up. I mean, everyone was pretty bummed out about it because all of our hard work kind of went to pieces, but I like to think of it as maybe like a second chance to maybe do a better job at it and put more effort into it. Industry professionals are echoing that sentiment with Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson stating his commitment to making commercial space flight a reality after the crash of its Spaceship 2. We're going to learn from what went wrong, discover how we can improve safety and performance, and then move forwards together. It's not all doom and gloom in the world of outer space. This month also brought a spacewalk on the International Space Station, enabling astronauts to repair and replace some of the exterior electronics, and a cosmic flight first. The European Space Agency's Rosetta spacecraft and Philae lander successfully reached the orbit of a comet and landed on its surface after 10 years of traveling through space. We are sitting on the surface, Phila is talking to us, more data to come and, and to be analyzed right now. Led by the ESA with a group of partners including NASA, scientists on the Rosetta mission, despite its rocky landing and energy issues associated with the solar panels, successfully gathered data about the comet. They hope to learn more about the composition of comets and how they interact with the solar wind, high energy particles blasted into space by the sun. Now, according to NASA, the first humans to walk on the surface of Mars are walking around on Earth right now, and they might just be middle schoolers. But preparing humans for space travel is no easy task. It takes years of training and an early interest in science. So how do students become interested in STEM? Some say all it takes is teachers who excel in teaching about science, technology, engineering, and math. We need math and science teachers in our in our schools. Um, I grew up during the Sputnik era. I think we're at another Sputnik moment with climate change and um, I want America to be able to compete. We need, we need to keep these math teachers teaching. For the former Saturday Night Live cast member and current senator from Minnesota, it was all kidding aside, speaking at an event for Math for America, an organization that works to keep great teachers teaching. 
And those students are going to need those math skills if they're interested in getting hands on our next story in that it involves one of the most advanced pieces of equipment in aerospace technology. Dream of flying one of these one day? How about building one? Lockheed Martin's F-35 fighter jet is one of the most sophisticated aircrafts out there, including a group of sensors and cameras that allow the pilot to see 360 degrees around, including below the plane. We're, we're putting technology on this airplane and there are things that have never been done before. I mean, the aerospace and defense industry is very exciting and it's not just about airplanes, it's all kind of different systems, uh, obviously largely driven by software. I mean, if, you want, if you're interested in technology and science, uh, this is an industry that it has a great future. There are countless jobs that go into building these aircraft, engineering, manufacturing, computer programming, even flying one. Want to one day have the opportunity to work on a project like this, fly it, or even be an astronaut? Here's what you have to do. We're looking uh, heavily into the STEM areas uh, for our recruiting. Uh, at one point during this program, we were hiring 500 engineers a day. I, I don't know of any astronauts that weren't pilots, uh, but uh, this, is, this is a great step going in that direction. Uh, the, the basic science and math, technology and engineering that is required to create it uh, is, is just unbelievable. The company already has thousands of this plane on order and is expected to produce the aircraft through 2040. Or if you choose not to develop your STEM skills for a job in the Department of Defense, the commercial air industry is in need of young science stars as well. A solid STEM education can lead you to any number of aerodynamic flights of fancy. From what it takes to get a plane off the ground. Before today, I didn't really know how the engine worked. To the inner workings of air traffic control. Seeing like the weight of the plane and like how the speed it's going. And, like if there's another plane, you got to move that out of the way. JetBlue's Aviation Career Education Academy at John F. Kennedy Airport is teaching kids what it takes to navigate the skies. This is the first year the airline is offering the program in New York City. The Black Aerospace Professionals Organization is also part of the program, which encourages students from underserved areas to explore aviation-related careers. I want to see them be able to have what the opportunity I did not have at a younger age, that way they can be successful at a younger age. Pilots and aviation professionals give students hands-on flight training. Kids also get to go behind the scenes, touring the hangar and other not-so-often-seen parts of the airport. I actually never saw inside a hangar or anything like this before and it's actually really cool to know just how much goes into preparing and maintaining an airplane. I feel like it's a stepping stone getting closer to my goal because I meet all these amazing people, pilots, who all encourage me to do better. High school students 14 to 18 years old can apply for the five-day program for a $25 fee. Kids are selected based on their cumulative GPA, an essay, and their interest in aviation. I'll be able to hopefully work for JetBlue and become a pilot. If you're interested in getting into the cockpit, check out JetBlue.com slash Inspiring Humanity for more information. Are you going to be a pilot someday? For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Arlene Bornstein. All right, we have to stop for a quick break, but coming up. The forces of nature can be catastrophic. Earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, but... There's real science behind each occurrence. We'll check out how understanding the science can help predict timing and even prevent the worst of their effects. And later, they're the virtual police of the future. It may not look like much, but these students are breaking down firewalls to ensure your digital lives stay out of harm's way. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, check out connectamillionminds.com during the break.